All right. Uh, next up on our list, and the last of the big boys, um, I let this one in only by uh, technicality because it technically says root beer on the, on the label now. Although Barks started in the late 1800s, um, when they first came out with it, they didn't market it as root beer. And I, I say for good reason because I would say out of all of them, it's probably not the root beeriest root beer, if that makes any sense to you at all. Sure. But, uh, you know, what the, for, really. the, the formula that they came up with, it was uh, the first root beer ever in introduced on the market to have caffeine in it. And uh, as you can tell from some of the great root beers out there, caffeine is definitely not a necessary ingredient. They also formulated it with uh, less sugar and higher carbonation. They said it was to give it less of a head. So, I think we're going to go ahead and give it a try. I actually, for, for one, like Barks, the taste of Barks. You know, I buy it. You buy it just to drink? Just to drink. Yeah. You know, I like caffeine. The caffeine is good, but I, like I believe it also has its place. I like and root beer. I don't I think like root bite. beer is... Barks definitely has bite. I... You, you know, know, they're... I, but I drink what I want. I suggest, you know, viewers and everybody and you as well. And everybody do, to drink do whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, do whatever, do whatever you want. You know, they... They didn't market it as root beer, like I said. They, they simply called it Barks. It's not Barks Soda, just Barks. Their original slogan was, drink Barks. It's good. It is good. I mean, comparatively speaking, just, just you know, versus what we've had so far to date here in the show, it's just, uh, that's not bad. You can, uh, you can tell it doesn't, doesn't have any... Any vanilla or molasses base to it, at least not one to really speak of. It's, it's definitely focused on the sassafras root to give it that extra bite. Yeah, this is true. But, you know, I, I will also say, going from no vanilla or molasses to obviously some that have too much, um, I, I think I would rather have one with none than one with too much. Because when, when you get too much molasses especially, that really coats the throat as it goes down and it really is not a thirst quencher and I find it's really hard to get through the whole bottle. Absolutely. Okay, next up on our list we have kind of what I like to call the the medium boy. It's kind of in there with the small ones but comes in a big bottle. Um, it's a, my, uh, my, one of my personal favorites I think is a Frost Top Root Beer started in 1926. It's best known for the never-ending head. That's what they like to say. And this root beer, you pour it into a cup and it's going to foam all the way up to the top. Smell that one. Oh, wow. That That's what I'm talking about. has one of the loveliest root beer aromas I think there is out there. <clears throat> Definitely have the sassafras root in there. Definitely some vanilla. Damn, homie. This is a this is a no molasses root beer, one of my favorites. The molasses root beers really get to me. I like the vanilla vanilla sassafras birch root, you know those those bases. This one is also famous for its wintergreen undertones. We'll go ahead and give this a sip. Find it really smooth. Oh wow! As it goes down. Yeah, it's very it rich. Really cleans as this goes down. You know, it doesn't really leave much of an aftertaste. You're ready for the next sip because you've already lost the flavor. You need more. Yeah. It's like one of those, you know, you you can't just take one sip. I could drink this all night long. Oh, that's just good root beer. And I think I have at one point in time. Oh, four, a few four, points in time. Four in a row maybe one time. You could find uh, Frost Top Root Beer at Winco's all over the uh, Pacific Northwest if you're interested in trying this one. Didn't really talk about where you could get the other ones up to this point because you, know, you can pretty much get them anywhere. Frost Top I know I've only seen it at Winco and uh, I'm sure it's at select other stores out there. It's I know it started back in 1926 and it was more of a Midwest root beer Yeah. and uh, just now made it out to the Northwest in the past couple years here so oh, wow. I'm really That's excited cool. it's out here. Everyone, it all, all of our viewers Give it a try. Let me know what you think. I 
Are we gonna open it? <laughs> it's a twist off. <laughs> All right. Obviously, next up on the list is uh, Henry Weinhardt's root beer. It's an interesting story about Henry's. It's a long time name for his beer, but actually, it's relatively new as far as the root beer scene goes. Um, it actually started back during Prohibition, when they had to stop making beer. They needed to have some form of revenue, so they started making root beer. Huh. And it's a twist off, but I'm a weakling, so we're gonna <laughs> twist a little harder next time. Henry's is a interesting root beer. It's good aroma. It has a mostly, a, I would say, a licorice root base. Definitely heavy on the vanilla in the Henry Weinhardt's root beer, though. Uh, this is one of those that I mentioned earlier. Some of them go a little overkill on vanilla. And I would have to say Henry's is one of those. It's it's ever present. Yeah, I don't really like it. Some would say you're drinking a bottle I think of vanilla this root extract. Beer sucks. And uh, definitely doesn't have any bite. I would say not enough root, not enough. Uh, it's naturally carbonated. I think they could uh, stand a little bit, carbonate a little bit longer. And uh, definitely cut some of the vanilla out of the root beer. Okay, next up we have uh, Stewart's root beer. It was uh, first made in 1926. It was um, small time, there for a really long time. In 1990, they actually began bottling it. So that's a relatively new thing for Stewart's to be in bottles. That's really when they got their name out there. Were they in cans? <sighs> you know, it, w it was only by keg. Kegs? Yeah, kegs of root beer sold in, in bars and uh, at Stewart's uh, wow. hamburger joints. Kind of like, you know, A&W has their shops. Oh. There are Stewart jo shops out there. They were drive-ins. Okay. And uh, Stewart's root beer is made of uh, over 20 varieties of roots. 20 different varieties in this thing. It's also it's a lot of roots. got some berry overtones in there. It's probably the only one we're going to taste today that's got the berries in it. And, uh, of course, some vanilla. Poured myself a hefty sample of the Stewart's root beer here. Make a nice uh, sniff of that one. You know, they, you see people in wine tastings and beer tastings and things like that, they always smell it first. Never, never really think to smell your soda first, do you? You know, root beer is probably the only one that warrants needing a needing a sniff, because the the aromas that come with it are definitely dramatic. Dramatic, yeah, it's a good word. Dramatic aromas, of drama. Oh, lots of different flavors playing in there. Got some licorice definitely in there. Um, got some sassafras, some ginger. Um, I think there's probably some birch in there. This is probably our, our first one I've had that I've actually tasted a little ginger in. Yeah, I taste it. Tasted it. You like that one, huh? It was uh, it was good. I was thirsty. <laughs> I'm getting a little not thirsty, but you know I think we'll make it through. 